Thank you. Uh, let me first uh, thank Atomium Culture, perhaps, for, for organizing these very demanding workshops. But in return, it's also very, very rewarding, uh, um, very rewarding exchange of ideas uh, between people from, from different walks of life. And I think we learn a lot from each other. So um, we have tried to, in the short time available, uh, put together. It's not a completely consistent storyline, perhaps, from, from group three, uh, but it's quite positive. Um, so we were charged with the, ask, uh, the question of how uh, we, in sort of cyclical political systems, uh, uh, deal with the, the needs and the wants of the public, which is a, a key factor in setting long-term policy objectives. So in a way, you can rephrase that is, is how, can we, how can we reconcile long-term goals that we all agree to with, with short-term uh, priorities and, and uh, barriers and, and challenges that, that comes up in that context. And um, our starting point is that this, this requires new governance approaches, but we're also very sensitive to the fact that uh, the suitability of approaches uh, is highly contextual depending on where you are. Uh, so, but one approach is that, that government should pursue is to mobilize and empower civil society to act in various ways. Um, and in return, um, a higher capacity in civil society can, can counter the instability caused by political ci cycles and, and uh, support government and try to foster a virtuous cycle in, in this transition. Um, we talked about the importance uh, and the need to reframe uh, the transition into a positive storyline. Uh, we talked yesterday about uh, this not being primarily a burden sharing, but, but more a sharing of future opportunities and a better quality of life, which is a cornerstone in this positive n narrative. And we think that government can actually facilitate such processes of reframing through supporting and also engaging in, in various arenas in, in civil society, whether through educational institutions, uh, local communities, but also through religious organizations and, and what have you. Uh, transparency in these processes and in policy making is important for building trust and, and uh, generating public awareness. Um, we think that uh, in this context also, um, ch changes in, in behavior uh, requires changes in, in attitudes and in norms and in values, and that in turn requires uh, uh, improvements in knowledge. And there are very, various instruments that can be used to facilitate learning and empower consumers and businesses to act. Uh, but we think also that the, the type of sort of voluntary labeling, carbon accounting schemes, which you could argue against from an economic theory perspective, are quite important for building acceptance and creating legitimacy for, for future more binding uh, government-led efforts. Um, and in a way, uh, if we have a good process uh, and a knowledgeable society, the transition uh, to a low carbon future may not be as, as dramatic as it might, might seem when we look at it now, because it's a transition over a long time, over a period by, uh, when, when norms or values are also developing. Uh, we know that some of the sort of technical options involved here involve very large in investments, and that require trustworthy and stable investment frameworks. We know that there are other options that are uh, more readily available, low-hanging fruits. Um, and in, in, in this whole context, we think that a menu of governance option is needed uh, in the scale from, from more voluntary to more uh, coercive policies, and uh, that society, of course, then should focus and move on the near-term, readily available, uh, less controversial issues. Um, a, the stable investment frameworks, uh, that requires a trust, trust in the processes by which they are established and broad agreement and trust in the resulting predictable and dynamically consistent policies. That is, um, 
we have to somehow make these frameworks and policies uh, less sensitive to the uh, cyclic nature of, of politics. And some examples include, for example, the UK Climate Change Act, the European Emissions Trading Scheme. We talked about government loan guarantees, where the so that there's a risk sharing involved in, in all this uh, in this process. Um, Timely stakeholder engagement needed to build political consensus, uh, broad buy-in into uh, setting future goals. Often it's easy to get agreement on the future goals. We need to do this, uh, build this, or reach a certain percentage targets. But the problems uh, arise when it comes to implementation where, for example, distributional effects of a policy is uh, uh, creating obstruction from incumbent industries or what have you. Um, so, uh, but uh, this process of, of implementation, of course, is very contingent on the issue area. So we don't think necessarily that in some issue areas that more information and knowledge and awareness actually will easily create a higher level of acceptance. Um, so that's a critical point. The delivery of clean energy policy packages needs safeguarded implementation. And you can think of various mechanisms for that, citizen panels, uh, commissions, structured ex post evaluation, uh, involving the same actors to also ensure and show that they have to stand by their commitments in terms of the goals when it comes to implementation. And that this was actually also uh, facilitate better policy learning and, and evidence-based policy development. Thank you.